in today's show. It is the A to Z or the E to Z of fantasy basketball. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Yesterday, we finished the team preview series. Today, just a bit of a fun show. A to Z. A to Z. As we go through each letter, just talk about some things, defining some terms, having a bit of fun with it. Why not? Before we get into some more hardcore fantasy stuff during the week. But I've got an announcement uh, about a league that I'm creating. I hope we get interest in this. I'm sure we will. But I hope we do. I was playing around with stuff last night and I thought, Let, let's let's do a league. Now, what, what, I'd, what it is, it is a draft only league in terms of the fact that there is no trades and there are no waiver wire acquisitions in this league. What it will be, is you draft. We have 27 rounds in this draft. 10 active guys, 17 bench players. 12-team league. You set weekly lineups, but you can't you know, make moves for injured guys. So let's see how it goes. It is a different challenge. And to make this a completely different challenge, I'm scrapping the regular categories. It is a category league, but we're scrapping them. What we are doing instead is we are having the, the the standard categories of assists, steals, blocks, threes, and free throw percentage will remain. But we will also add in defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, getting rid of total rebounds. We will add in free throw attempts. We will add in two-pointers made to go along with uh, three pointers made, and instead of free throws made, I'm doing free throws attempted because I think that's that that is the stat that is used so often in impact metrics. Um, and I'm going to put three point percentage and two point percentage to replace field goal percentage. So it's an 11 category league. It's no waiver ads or trades. We'll do it as 12 man. It will be winner take all, 50 buck entry. Winner takes home 600 dollars, and there will be a draft in the. I think it's. You know what? I probably should... Let, let's bring up that actual date that I do have the draft set because I, I have set the, the draft date and you need to know that before you apply to get into this league. So let's bring up the draft details. It's called the Locked On Fantasy Championship. It'll be on Australian time, Friday, October 15th at 11 a.m., which will be US time, Thursday, October the 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So this is a weird league. 12 teams, 27 roster spots, 11 categories, weird categories. Hopefully it just separates who's good, who's not. Maybe I'll finish last, who knows? But we've got 11 spots to fill in this league. So there will be certain little contests that we have running throughout the, uh, the, the coming weeks as we lead up to that. And the first contest to get one spot in this league is the following. In the YouTube comments of this video, and it won't be first answer gets it. I will pick at random who gets the right answer. You need to tell me what is my NFL team that I support. That is all you need to do. Just write the name of the team in the NFL that is my team in the comments of this YouTube video. And I will pick a random person there. And then I'll reply to you, get your email details so I can send you the invite to this league. That is it. That is the announcement now. I, you know what, before we, before we start off and get into talking about the A to Z of fantasy basketball, when I tell you the A to Z and at number at B, it's Built Bar. It is the best tasting protein bar ever. You know Built Bar. The flavors are amazing. These taste just like a candy bar. It's a delicious treat, but it's also good for you. You can get raspberry flavor, orange flavor, salted caramel, German chocolate, cookies and cream, the goat, mint brownie. So many great flavors, but they are also good for you because they have 17 to 18 grams of protein across their range. 130 to 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. Just an amazing nutritional profile to go with the amazing taste of Built Bar. So get yourself your boxes, built.com and get it for 15% off by using our promo code LOCKED15. That is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 
at built.com. So go to built.com, get all the boxes that you want, all the flavors, get the mix box even, so you can work out what your favorite is by putting all those flavors into one box. So get that done at built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Got another product to tell you about. It's amazing. Sweat block. You know this this issue that people have of excessive sweating. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe someone you know is. And you have to worry about what color shirt are we going to wear today because you don't want these giant pit stains. Well, sweat block is the answer to you. It is a doctor-created, doctor-recommended clinical antiperspirant that's stronger than nearly everything out on the market. It's been around for over 10 years. You might have seen it on Rachel Ray. It's actually number one on Amazon this week. Get the sweat block wipes. You wipe them under your arm before you go to bed. You wake up the next morning, you have a wash. You head off to work, you head off to school, you head off to whatever you're going to do, and it covers you for up to seven days. Not seven hours, seven days. So get that sweat block product, get the wipes, wipe them on, and see how you go. This is They've also got the dry shirt guarantee. So if it doesn't work, if it doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. How good's that? You can get them at Amazon. They're available at CVS, but they're also available at sweatblock.com for 20% off if you use the promo code locked on. So head to sweatblock.com and use our promo code locked on and save 20% off the sweat block products. All righty then. Let's go in and um, and talk A to Z of fantasy basketball. Just a fun show. A stands for ADP. Some of this is basic shit. Some of it is stuff you may not know. But I put out a call for things that what do people know? What do they don't? What, what don't they know? Hey, and some of them are stretches, let's be honest. ADP, average draft position. On average, where is that player being drafted? Now, how Yahoo, ESPN, Fantrax handles that in terms of are they only counting 12-team leagues? Are they counting all of their mock drafts? Are they counting full mock drafts? Are they counting auto picks? I don't know the exact way that they go about and do that, but that is what ADP means, is where, where are players being drafted on average? So it gives you an idea of what the market is thinking. It is not a definitive term. It is what well, is a definitive term. It means what it means, but it is not a definitive guide to where that player gets drafted. It's just another data point that we have along with rank, along with your projections, along with injury history, uh, role, uh, upside, downside, all that sort of stuff. You all throw it in there. And that is what ADP means. Average draft position. I think most people knew that, but maybe they didn't. B stands for busts. What do we mean when we say a bust? What's this play going to be? Does it mean they're going to be shit house? Maybe. But what it usually means, or when I reference a bust, it means that they are not going to be worth the value of where they are getting picked, whether that's via their current rank, whether that's via their ADP or not. It's like if someone, if I say that someone at pick 10 is a bust, that doesn't mean that they're going to be unrosterable. It means that I think using pick 10 on them is a waste and maybe they're the 30th best player. That is what, when I say bust, that's what it means. It means they will not live up to the draft capital, whether that's whether that's the draft pick that you use, whether that's the uh, salary cap dollars that you spend in a salary cap draft. That is what I mean by bust. So when I talk busts, and later than a week, this coming week, we're going to have a show on busts across ESPN and Yahoo. That is what I mean when I say busts. C, categories. It's a category league. How does a category league work? There are plenty of you who've only played points leagues before. Category league is more complex than a points league. What it is, is that each individual category is scored on its own. So it's points, rebounds, assists, steals, whatever you want to do for a category. And then I go up with my stats in those categories against your stats in those categories. Whoever has the most points wins. Whoever has the most assists wins that category. Whoever has the most rebounds wins that category. And then at the end of the matchup, You see how many categories you've won and you see how many you've lost. And in certain formats, you either get a a win if you win more than your opponent or you get a win for each category that you win. That is what a category is. You can have whatever categories you want, as you saw by my earlier earlier example of the league that I'm setting up, the Locked On Championship with uh, different categories in there. Your standard categories, points, threes, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, and turnovers. They are your standard nine categories for a category league. D is DFS. DFS stands for Daily Fantasy Sports. One-day contests, usually for money. Different formats of DFS, cash games, where you are going one-on-one against someone in a head-to-head, or you are playing a contest called a 50-50, where half of the people in that tournament win money and the other half don't, or a double-up where you put in five bucks, and if you finish in the top 48%, you get your double your money back, but it's not a, a graduated payout. That's a cash game where the vast majority or you know, not vast majority, sorry, where 50% of the field wins money. That's a cash game in DFS. 
A tournament is where you've got a much larger field and the payout is way higher up for the top and then it, it trickles down and you don't get that same you know, consistent payout. So it's, you've got to be right up the very top to get the big payouts. So you're looking for different things. But that's what DFS is. Every day the NBA is on. It's Tuesday. The games that are being played. Pick your lineup. The players are assigned a salary. You've got a salary cap. Fit them in there and you go for one day and the next day it resets. That daily fantasy sports, you're playing daily. That is what DFS stands for. Again, mo- most of you go, oh, of course, that's what it is, Josh. But some of you don't know. And that's what we're trying to do here. And hey, let's have a bit of fun. EFG. I didn't mean EFG is that they're the next three letters. I'm talking about the letter E here for the A to Z. And that's EFG percentage, effective field goal percentage. And I'm going to lump true shooting percentage in here as well. What is EFG percentage? Effective field goals just takes in the importance of three-pointers. Because normal field goal percentage tells you what percentage of shots that you hit. Five of 10, you're at 50%. But if four of those five field goals you hit are three-pointers then it is, and you're still going at 50%, that is way more beneficial to your team than if five of those shots are all two-pointers. Because think about that. Like if you're five of 10 from two-point range, that's 10 points. If you're five of 10 and four of those are threes, that's 14 points. So while they're both 50% shooting, the guy that scored 14% uh, 14 points on 10 shots is way more effective. And that's what effective field goal is. So it's your field goals made plus half of a three-pointer. That, that's that's all it is. So it's field goals made plus three pointers made times 0.5 divided by field goal attempts. That gives you your um the th- effective field goal. So it takes into consideration that the three pointer is worth you know 1.5 times a two pointer. So that that's all that it's doing. Simple calculation. True shooting gives the weight to three pointers, like effective field goal percentage, but it includes free throw shooting in that as well. And there's a formula. For true shooting percentage, um, it's a little bit more complex than the um, than the effective field goal percentage formula. A little bit different there, but what it basically is is it's including um, uh, free throw attempts, but it's free throw attempts times 0.44, um, and that's your field goal attempts plus your um, field, uh, 0.44 free throw attempts, and then it, it is including everything in that 0.44. In there, um, it's it, sorry, try again. True shooting is total points scored divided by two times the true shooting attempts, and true shooting attempts is field goal attempts by 0.44 free throw attempts. It, regardless, what you need to know is that true shooting takes into consideration how efficient you are from two point range, from three point range, and and from getting to the line, and that's all weighed weighed in there in terms of volume. Effective field goal is just in, including the uh, impact of three pointers. So if you don't, want to, if you want to talk someone's efficiency, and uh, true shooting is a better idea of someone's total efficiency, effective field goal percentage is a better idea of someone's shooting efficiency, scoring efficiency versus shooting efficiency. True shooting takes scoring efficiency. Effective field goal is shooting efficiency. So that's really how those two things um, work. F, fantasy points. If you're in a fantasy points league, what is a fantasy point? Well, it's whatever you want it to be, really, however you want to structure it. A default Yahoo league gives you one point per real point scored, 1.2 per rebound, 1.5 per assist, three per steal, three per block, and negative one per turnover. You can change those around. You can have missed shots for field goals uh, missed. You can have missed shots, missed po- might negative points for field goals attempted or free throws attempted or whatever you want to do. But fantasy points just brings all the players' contribution boiled down to one number and however you want to do that, do it. it there's no like, this is, the best, um, this is the best fantasy points system. This is the one that's most realistic. You're never going to get that. And in the end, there's not one that's best or one that's not best or whatever it is. Because whatever system you use, everyone in your league is dealing with that system. Everyone in your league has that same scoring system and you will just adjust the values based on what scoring system there is. It's not a best or a worst or this is way better if you do it this way. You can have whatever thoughts you want on that and you can adjust it however best suits your league. But in the end, it all gets boiled down to one number. You make your trades and waiver wire acquisitions and draft picks based on whatever scoring system you have and you adjust from there. But that's fantasy points, and that is F on this list. G is a game limit. What's a game limit? Well, there's two things. In a rotisserie league, which we'll talk about later on, it is the amount of amount of games that can be played at each position. Usually, that's 82. 
So you've got your active spots, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, or whatever, and you can play 82 games only at each position. Now, whether that's from one player, you draft Steph Curry, he plays 82 games for the season, he sits in your point guard spot, and you get 82 games. But realistically, he might play 75. So then you've got seven more games that you can get another point guard off your bench or off the waiver wire, stream them in, and build up to that 82 games. The other, the other game limit thing is weekly game limits doesn't allow this on Yahoo, but on ESPN on fan tracks, you've got this option, is where you can sit a, set a maximum amount of games that are played each week. I think a, for a 10-team, or sorry, a 10-man active roster, if you set a weekly game limit of 38, I think that's pretty solid. Now, be aware, the way that most of these sides do it is that as long as you're under that 38 come Saturday, you're allowed to go over it on Sunday. Right. Uh, that that's fine. You, you've got that one day. As long as you are under it, like the day that you pass over it, is you know, every every game on that day gets counted. Some guys have their commissioners go super hard. No, you've got to play exactly thirty eight games, and if you play anything more, we'll manually go in and change it. League software doesn't do that. It'll just be that you if you the day that you pass that threshold for the week, every game that day counts. If you pass it on a Saturday, that's fine. It just means your games on Sunday won't count. So that's a game limit. That's a way to help reduce the impact of streaming if you don't want to do that. And if you want to make it, the matchups get a little bit more even. But you still got that issue with, with the weekend and uh, that Sunday going over the game limit possibility. H, host sites. When we say host sites, it's where is the league hosted? Yahoo, ESPN, CBS, Fantrax, Flea Flicker, Sleeper. They're probably the major ones, I would say. There might be some other ones out there. I think Sports WS is another one too. It just means where, where you host your leagues. Now, the, by far the most popular is Yahoo. By far the most customizable is Fantrax. You can do whatever you want on Fantrax. Uh, ESPN is pretty poor in a, in a lot of those respects. CBS is a little bit clunky to use. Um, Sleeper only has fantasy points and only has a game pack pick format where your players play one game a week maximum. That's it. You have to pick what game they play. I hate that format personally, but that's fine. Hopefully they adjust that. Um, so that's you know, host sites. It's, and and it, it varies because they have different things that they're good at. Yahoo probably is the best all-around one, but if you are playing Dynasty, Fantrax is where you want to go. And there is a little bit more, like I see, Yahoo doesn't have those game limits implied or you can't set that for a week. You can on Fantrax. There's just less customization on Yahoo. The The app is a little bit... is. is yeah, Fantrax doesn't have an app. They've got that, the web page on the phone, which I've got no problem using. But it just depends on what you want. I, I would highly recommend using either Yahoo or Fantrax though and not worry with the other ones personally. I, injury prone. This gets thrown around a lot, the term injury prone. And you know that I push back on it quite a bit. Now, there are players who get hurt. That, that just happens. But often, the tag is thrown around way too, way too freely. You're getting a broken hand one year does not mean you are likely to sprain your ankle the next year. That's just not how injuries work. If you have a persistent knee problem, maybe like a Porzingis or a Kemba Walker, yeah, then that that's an issue. But you know, twisting your ankle, breaking your finger, getting a concussion, that's just shit luck. Like it's not it's not a reflection on your character or your toughness or your injury proneness. It's not. We can say Anthony Davis has had had a shit run. Right, it was he got injured a lot last year, but for four years in a row he really didn't get hurt at all. Brook Lopez played eighty-two games for three straight years to begin his career, then broke his foot twice, and then he was injury prone. We're never touching him again. Now he doesn't get hurt again. So which is it? He's an Iron Man. He's injury prone. He's an Iron Man, or it's just that shit happens. Like injuries happen. It, it's not. Yeah, people just focus. I'm never drafting this guy because he's injury prone. Like Chris Paul, who's missed three games in two years. Stuff just changes. Sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes it doesn't happen. It is a label that gets overused and put way too much importance on, I think, in fantasy leagues. <laughs> Look at this dickhead. J is for me. Um, and basically, this is just a way for me to say thank you to everybody who has supported this show throughout the almost 2,500 episodes that we've done on the YouTube channel, the podcast, the work at Basketball Monster. I do not come out here and tell you that I am, I'm the best. You have to listen to everything that I say. Everyone else is trash. 
I'm not throwing out fake endorsements or you know everything. I, everything I say is right and whatever. You, I don't ever say that. I will gladly admit when I'm wrong. I will tell you the process behind my thoughts on what I do. I try to make what I do educational, informative, provide some knowledge, but also just have a laugh, mate. Like I just try to make it entertaining and funny. This is a fu- this is a fun game. Basketball's fun. It's sport. Fantasy is fun. It's a hobby. It's fun. Let's have fun with it. I'm not out here, you know, telling you, blowing, tooting my own horn, telling you how good it is and how much work that I'm doing and all this stuff and how I'm never wrong and I'm the best at everything and don't listen to anybody else. That's ridiculous. I'm never going to say that because it's just not true. What I try to do is bring the best of what I have, the best of my ability with humor, insight, entertainment, talking to people in all areas and try and make it fun, educational and, and help as much as I can. And thank you to everybody who's allowed me to make this my job. Thank you. And in saying that, guys, if you want parts for your car, (laughs) Rock Auto is the place that you go. Why would you go to a local chain auto parts store, waste your time and money to buy that same part? Ridiculous. Why would you spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts for your car? It's just not worth it. Rock Auto is a family business that they've been online serving do-it-yourselfers for the last 20 years. Whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet, Rock Auto has everything you could need for your car. So go to rockauto.com and check out their expansive selection of parts, everything you need for your car or truck. And in there, how did you hear about us, Box? Right, locked on, so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Football's back, and the number one place for you to be placing all of your pro and college football action is at Bet Online with a new updated site and interface. Even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today by using the promo code NFL100, and you get a 100% welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for signing up from football, basketball, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Okay, let's go on to K. Keeper League slash Dynasty League. What's the difference? A Keeper League is where you get to choose a set amount, and your commissioner will decide, players that every year you can keep on your roster. It might have three keepers, five keepers, six keepers, whatever it is. And just just a side note, I tell you what's a pet peeve of mine for literally no reason at all. When people call it a keepers league, I don't know why I hate it. I, I just hate it and I don't know why. I like keeper, singular, and I don't know why I like that either. But anyway, that's just me. A dynasty league is you have the ability to keep every player on your roster. A keeper league, you have a set amount of keepers to keep whether that's five or seven or whatever it is. And your league might have penalties for keeping those, draft pick loss, escalating draft pick costs, escalating salary cap contributions, same as in Dynasty Leagues. Dynasty gives you ability to keep everybody. Keeper is a set amount of uh, set amount of players and the league carries forward year on year on year. So you're building teams over time. Al is LeBron. <laughs> Outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. Now, I'm not talking about LeBron James, the player. I'm talking about LeBron, the metric, which is available at B-Ball Index, Basketball Index. It is an all-in-one stat, and I'll tell you what it is. This is what it stands for. Luck, adjusted, player estimate, that's the E, using a box, B, prior, regularized, on-off, which is LeBron. It's a bit clunky as, as, an, as, a, um, as an acronym. But luck-adjusted player estimate using a box prior regularized on-off. So what it does, it measure, measures the impact of a player per 100 possessions using on-off data, using box score numbers, using a whole bunch of stuff that they have over at uh, Basketball Index. They don't put the full formula out there, of course, because it's a proprietary number. But it is a number that is... Um, I think really, really indicative of some uh, current performance and future performance as well. It's a number that along with Raptor and EPM are probably the three all-in-one metrics that I put the most um, stock in. There's a great write-up on on Raptor on the 538 site of what it means. 
and how that it's determined. So Raptor is another one of these. And EPM is another one, which, can, which is estimated plus minus. It just, they are all working to try and give you an idea of how impactful a player is when they are on the court. And it's using box score numbers. It's using on-off numbers. Yeah, Raptors using things like, you know, uh, how many open threes they set up. Just how valuable is a player outside of points per game? That's what these numbers do. So when I use LeBron, when I use Raptors, to give you an idea of how impactful the player is, not necessarily from a fantasy perspective, but it gives you an idea, hey, if this guy's putting up really interesting fantasy numbers, but their LeBron Raptor is all negative, then you feel like at some point, something's going to change. They're either going to become more impactful or coaches will realize these are just empty stats and maybe this little area where they're putting up good numbers doesn't last. And that's the way I like to use those numbers, just to understand, hey, are these numbers actually real? Are they, they're real in terms of they're scoring those numbers or they're putting up those stats, but is it something that a team and a coach is going to like long-term? Or is this a flash in the pan sort of scenario where someone's got to put up numbers that they're doing it, but it's actually making uh, the, the team is actually worse uh, over that per- time period? M is a mock draft. It's a draft that is practice for your draft coming up. That is all a mock draft is. Maybe I was stretching a little bit. I'm sure everyone knows what a mock draft is, but you go in, you do a mock draft. Actually, you know what? Maybe not. Because I will say I'm doing a mock draft and then I put it out there and then at the end of that draft, people go, oh, so are we playing this league out? Look, no, no. A mock draft is literally just a practice draft. So you can get practice at drafting, see where everyone falls, work on your strategies, that sort of thing. That's what a mock draft is. N is for never again. I drafted Jaron Jackson last year, never again. Get that mindset. In fact, Jack Armstrong, what should we do? Get that garbage out of here! If you go into a fantasy draft with this mindset, you are destined to lose. It's like having a do not draft list, which... Again, people used to have this list, and I made such a stink about this, that now people are always like, well, yeah, of course, it's just now do not draft at ADP which is totally fine. But having a guy that like, oh, I had him last year, you were shit, I'll never draft him again. It is a terrible mindset because context is super important. Jaron Jackson came into last season with a knee injury. We were, I guess, not misled, but we were never clarified by the Grizzlies as to how long he was going to be. It took forever for him to come back and it screwed us, but he's healthy. So he comes in this year and maybe people have that mindset. I think he's like ranked outside the top 90 on ESPN. And if you're getting him there, it's because people are just saying, well, I'm never drafting this guy again because he screwed me over last year. And having that mindset is a terrible way to play fantasy. But people have it. Eliminate it from your lexicon. I think is probably the best way to uh, approach that. O is for old guys. And what I wanted to, to address here is that just because you're old doesn't mean you're bad. I'm old. I'm older than all NBA players, apart from that bloke on the, on the screen there. Um... But be aware that at some point, when players are over 30, there will be a significant decline. For some, it happens immediately. Think LaMarcus Aldridge last season. For some, it's a slow decline. For some, like LeBron James, it apparently never happens. But even like a Chris Paul who's 36, he's still really good, but he's not top five Chris Paul that he was five years ago. Old guys get overlooked often in fantasy because the upside for them is generally pretty low. But you can't have a team that's all upside. You've got to get some uh, some older guys with a really stable level of production. But just be aware on those 34-year-old guys, injuries come in more and declines can happen really at any point. P is punting. What is punting? It is a strategy that is only applicable in category leagues, not in points leagues. Punting means disregarding one or more categories. It does not, contrary to popular belief, it does not mean deliberately being bad in those categories. If you punt free throws, you do not need to draft every bad free throw shooter. In fact, you do not even need to have a bad free throw percentage for your team. It just means that you do not care about that category. It means ignoring a category. It does not mean deliberately being bad in a category. You might end up being bad in a category, but that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to strengthen your other categories rather than being bad in one. Because if you're just trying to be bad in a category, you will not win fantasy. Punting has way more effect in a head-to-head category league than it does in a roto league. But it can still be successful in a roto league under one of these three conditions. More than nine categories. More than 12 teams 
or if it is a 12-team, nine or eight category Roto League, if your league is just insanely competitive where nobody drops out and everybody is pushing and waiver wire and trades all the way to the end, punting can have success there in Roto Leagues. Quality games. Let's go for this definition again. A quality game is a game that a team plays on a day where there is lower volume. NBA schedule is not balanced. It is not seven games every day. Some days will have 12 games. Some will have five. Some will have seven. Some will have 11. A quality game is a day where a team plays when there's not as many teams playing. So therefore, you don't run the risk on that day in fantasy of having to decide who starts and who sits. If you add a waiver wire player on a high volume day, you're not going to be able to play them most likely. So understanding what a quality game is and when you're drafting and looking at those guys, if they play more quality games, it means you get to use them more and maximize your games played. The way I like to work it out, and this is a complicated formula for some, but it's, it's not really when you think about it. It is the, the way that I like to work out um, the quality games. I do how many active roster spots do I have? Standard is 10. How many total roster spots do I have? Standard is 13. So 10 divided by 13. Right, then I multiply that by 15, which is the absolute maximum amount of games that can be on one NBA day. 30 teams, 15 games. It might happen once a year. So I do active, sp active spots divided by total roster spots times 15. Get that number, minus two. And that is my quality game cutoff. And for a standard format, that gives you nine. So if there's nine games or fewer on that day, then in nearly every situation, you will be able to use everyone who's playing. If you add a waiver wire guy, there'll probably be a roster spot available. You won't have to make a start sit decision. Decision. If you've got 10 or more, then you're probably in a situation where you are going to have to make a start sit I can't, well, I can't speak. Start sit decision. Or if you add a waiver wire guy, they're not going to be useful for you. R is rotisserie, the third type of league. Head-to-head -head categories, head-to-head -head points, rotisserie. Rotisserie, there's no weekly matchup. It's not me versus you this week. It is a season-long uh, endeavor against everybody. So you just accumulate stats in whatever categories you put in. Eight categories, nine categories, 10, whatever. You accumulate stats. And then at the end of the... Uh, well, you know, as it's currently being tallied, but at the end of the season, you get graded in each category. If there's 12 teams in your league, you get graded 12 through one. If I, at the end of the season, if all of my players that I've played back to that game limit thing earlier on, if all of my players have played, you know, if they've scored and I have scored the most points out of anybody, I get 12 rotisserie points for the points category. If my team has the lowest amount of assists out of every team in the league, I get one rotisserie point for that category. And whoever was on top gets 12 and whoever was second gets 11 and down the list that way. And then I add up all of those scores, my 12 for points, my one for assists, my seven for threes into a number that will be end, end up being 74 or 68 or whatever it is. And whoever gets the most total rotisserie points wins the Roto League. That is how it works out. So you're competing against every team over the course of the season, but there is no weekly matchups. That is what a rotisserie league is. It is fun. There is no playoffs. It can be, I guess, against your friends, it's a little bit harder because you're not having that head-to-head -head matchup. Um, and you don't have that week-to-week -week variation. But in terms of who's got the best team for the year, it probably is the best way of finding that out. S is salary cap. Salary cap, the new name for an auction draft. We've had done a whole show on auction drafts and tips of how to do it. But what it is, you go in there with a predetermined budget, usually $200. A player goes up, whether that's Luka Doncic or James Harden, someone nominates that player. And then everyone has their money, and they bid. And when the, the bidding, yeah, going once, going twice, going three times, done, and you get Luka Doncic for $55, and now you have $145 left to get the other 12 guys onto your team. That's a salary cap draft. We'll be doing mock drafts of them. It is the fairest way to do a draft. I actually think for a rotisserie league, I, I like salary cap drafts for all leagues, but for a roto league, Salary, um, a salary cap draft is probably the way to go. Just because in Roto, there are fewer 
strategies. Like punting isn't really as much of a thing. In a head-to-head league, if you're like at pick 10, you can just lean into a punt and the values of players changes. But in a roto league, everyone's sort of looking for the same thing, like strong balance across all categories. So you are at a disadvantage at the end of a snake draft. But if you're in a salary cap draft, everyone can go for everybody. And I think that's a really good way to do a roto draft is with a salary cap format. Trades. I say trades because I think it's really important that people people trade way too much in fantasy basketball. People trade for the sake of doing trades. And honestly, a lot of vast majority of trades make your team worse. Worse, I think. Because unless you are just ripping someone off, yeah, the urge to do a trade puts you at a disadvantage so often. Be really, really cautious about it. There are people who do a draft and then want to do a trade straight after. Nothing's changed from when you draft the day before. Why are you trading straight away? Unless it is an absolute no-brainer trade. If it's a borderline one or it's someone you missed, it, whatever. But in general, trades, your first instinct when offered a trade should be no. Not saying you hit decline straight away, but your first in- instinct should be no. And then look at it a little bit further. But people trade too much. And not, I'm not trying to take fun away from it. Trading is fun. But in a large portion of cases, it makes your team worse. And nobody wants that. U is for usage. What does usage mean? It gets bandied about and it is often misrepresented. Oh, this player will get more usage. Do you know what usage means? This is what usage means. It is the percentage of a team's possession that you end when you are on the court. It doesn't mean how long the ball is in your hands. It doesn't mean what you're doing, whether you're running the offense. It doesn't mean any of that. If you have a usage of 30%, it means that when you are on the court, 30% of your team's possessions, you, you create the end of that possession. And there are three ways of ending a possession in the NBA. A shot, that ends a possession. A free throw attempt, that's the end of a possession. Or a turnover, that is it. They are the three things that go into usage rate. So someone having their usage rate up does not mean that they get more assists or steals or blocks or rebounds or minutes or dribbles or anything like that. It might mean there's more assists. It might not. Usage means field goal attempts, free throw attempts, and turnovers. Now, there are other types of usage rates out there. True usage is a good one. Hog rate is another one, which does determine your time of ball in hand, including assist rate in that as well, um, including you know, missed assists, all that sort of stuff, as to how much you're actually taking part of it. But just pure usage is field goal attempts, free throw attempts, and turnovers. They are the three things that are factored into that and nothing more. V is for voting. Voting on trades. League votes are stupid. Do not do league voting. Commissioner approval only. Oh, but why should the commissioner have the uh, authority to uh, veto trades? He doesn't. He doesn't veto trades. What the commissioner does is looks at the trade and go, that's fishy. That looks like cheating. Let's figure out what's going on. If someone wants to trade Carl Anthony Towns, for Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic, you let it go through. That's not cheating. If someone wants to trade Carl Anthony Towns for James Wiseman, that is cheating. Cheating and collusion, it really stands out. Voting, you should not be trying to make a determination on if it's fair or if it's who's wins or whatever like that. Because you don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to pan out. If someone's taking a bet, say, you know what? Let's use the Wiseman for Jakob Pertl. Let's use that. Pertl, a guy locked in as a starting center. Wiseman may not even play. But someone wants Wiseman and thinks, you know what? I think he's going to blow up in the second half of the year. Pertl, he does what he does. I'm taking a flyer. I need to take that risk. You don't veto that trade because Pertl's already been the 70th best player and Wiseman's 150th. But there's a reason for it. Right, and sometimes you just got to let that shit go through. So commissioner veto power only for voting and they don't get to vote on a fairness. You don't have a fairness committee. Is this trade even? None of that shit. Is there collusion? That is the only reason. So what if a, an experienced player is taking advantage of a bad player? Well, they learn. 
And unless it is just completely ridiculous and someone is you know, throwing the league on purpose, then you just have to let it go through. Shit happens. That That's my view on it anyway. League voting sucks. Get rid of it. W is waiver wire. The waiver wire is just that when you release a player off your team or someone else does, they go to the waiver wire and they can be added by other teams. Now, some teams, you, your waiver wire process might be determined in first in best dressed. There might be a 48-hour waiver period where they sit there and then there's a, an order that teams can claim that guy based on record. And then if you use your number one waiver priority on a guy, then you go to the back of the queue. Or some, team, some leagues might use FAB, which is an auction budget. So every day there's a processing time. And I see someone, Dylan Brooks has been released to the waiver wire. I want him. I'll spend five of my $100 budget on getting him. And someone might spend six and then they end up with him. But the waiver wire is just players that aren't on anybody's team. And there are three different ways that, that you can set up to have the acquisition of those players. X is for X rank. You see that on Yahoo, that is X for expert. I know expert doesn't start with an X, but that's what they have. And that is their default ranking. On a Yahoo draft, you will see two things, X rank and rank. X rank is the subjective, I don't know how they do it, subjective expert rank of these are the ranks of players. Rank is their statistical rank based on the format of your league. And what there's formula sometimes a little bit screwy there as well. But that's what the difference between rank and X rank is. I would avoid both. I would just ignore both of those things, to be honest, but paying attention to them so the understanding what everyone else in everyone else in your league is seeing. Y is for Yahoo, because I didn't know what else to put it at Y. Yahoo. Hey, I, I write articles for Yahoo. Yahoo is a good spot to play fantasy basketball. So is Fantrax. Yeah. I'm not I'm not just uh, not just company manning this. And then lastly, Z. Z. What's a Z score? It is also known as a standard score. It standardizes the value of numbers in a normal distribution. Now, some would argue that basketball statistics aren't normally distributed, and I that I understand that point. But I think at this point, standard scores and Z scores are the best way we have of being able to standardize the value of someone in points, assists, steals, blocks. Because you know, uh, someone scores 20 points, but no one gets 20 assists or 20 blocks. So how do we work out what the value of a 20-point scorer is? How does that convert to blocks? It's about 1.1. And you do that by standard scores. And standard scores is by getting the the player's contribution, 20 points, minus the sample size average. And usually you do that for, like I say, in a a standard uh, 12-man league, you do about 180 players, which is everyone rostered plus injured reserve guys and and the top couple of waiver wire guys. So about 180, around that mark. So what's the average point scored in in that zone of players? So your contribution, 20 minus the average, which say 17, divide that number, three, by whatever the standard deviation of that sample is. And that standard deviation might be four. So three divided by four gives you a standard score of 0.75. And then someone who gets you know, 1.2 blocks might have a standard score of 1.1, meaning that 1. 1. 1.2 blocks is more valuable than a 20-point scorer standardized across the leagues. That's what a Z score is. Just if you want more examples of that, just Google Z score or Google standard score. But that's what it is. It's your number minus the average of the sample divided by the standard deviation to get a standard score to standardize it across all those categories who have got different ranges of numbers. And guys, that is it. The A to Z of fantasy basketball is done. Tomorrow, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe do a bust show or the sleepers for points leagues. We'll work it out. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Leave a comment. You know what comment to leave. You want to answer that question if you want in the league. Thumbs up me. Ring the notification bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.